Well, once again, issues in America are making their way to our friends of the North. Students at dozens of universities in America and Canada are continuing to protest for Palestinian human rights after the October 7th attack. Hospitals and places of worship are being targeted as well, adding to the ongoing drug crisis. You can add that to the mix as well. They're in some serious trouble up there. How are these problems going to get resolved, if ever? Well... We're going to find out here from the host of the Charbon Report, Michael Charbon. He follows all this very closely. Michael, Toronto, the, the police of Ch chief, chief of police, I should say there, has expressed this importance of the city upholding their rights uh, for freedoms to protest. But now that city's uh, spent $12 million on policing these protests across the city of Toronto. Officers are being uh, ambushed, assaulted by these protesters, yet professors, friends and students are encouraging these acts of violence what are your thoughts, and do you think that it is possible for them to protest peacefully? We thought Canadians, respectful, maybe they protest peacefully. Not the case. Well, there's seven universities now across Canada that have encampments. Uh, the University of Toronto said that they weren't going to do that. They put up fencing, and then early Thursday morning, uh, they came in. Uh, yes, you're right about the $12 million. Imagine that. And uh, the police are being assaulted, but they're not tolerating anything. But Canada as yet has not seen any movement of police coming in or removing them, unlike what you guys have done in the States with about 2,100 students who've been removed. Uh, the Canadian sentiment still is that they acknowledge the right to peaceful protest, but threatening chance and death and, and, and aggressive anti-Semitism is not tolerated. I mean, many feel that... Um, these encampments are the apex of an ideologically motivated cultural religious war. And it's, and it's showing up in that anti-Semitic attacks in Canada have raised by about 182% since 200, uh, 2015, I should say. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're being very concerned about uh, uh, the Palestinian youth movement. But one thing that's ironic and has been pivotal, and I've heard from a lot of Canadians here, you're seeing these uh, these students in their kafias with their belly tops and sitting there talking, and others who are uh, outwardly LGBTQ talking about this, uh, this effort, where nowhere in the Middle East would they be ever allowed to wear that or say that, except for one place, and that's Israel. And finally, when Bernie Sanders says that this could be Biden's Vietnam, uh, this is the same scenario for Trudeau because this upset will affect the election. And, and that's kind of where we're at in, in this particular topic. It's I thought that was interesting too, Bernie Sanders' comments there. Interesting that it applies now to Trudeau as well. Uh, let's move yep. on to this, though. Protests and comments, they continue, though, at the University of Toronto. But here's the best part. As you mentioned, they're allowed to stay. I, I just it's, it's fascinating to me that the, the, these colleges and, and universities are now... Uh, trying to negotiate with these protesters. I mean, they're destroying property, yet let's try to appease their demands. Listen, you want to protest, you're allowed to do that. You can carry as many signs and you can say practically anything you want. As soon as you start uh, breaking the law, occupying and camping, what happens to all the fecal matter? What happens to all the garbage? What mm -hmm. happens to the grass? What happens to the ability of students who want to graduate not being able to do that? What about the threatening nature to uh, Jewish students? This is all wrong. And, and that's crossed the line. And I think... There are many Canadians who have reached that point and saying, enough already. And um, I think you're going to see next week some reaction because um, uh, there are many uh, premiers of many provinces who are, are, are objecting to this, knowing full well that if you give them a finger, they're going to take a hand. And that's basically where we're at at this point, John. Yeah, you give them an inch, they take a mile. Isn't that the other expression there, too? <laughs> Michael yeah. Chervon, uh, pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Thanks, sir. All right, that does it here for Sunday Report. Thank you so much for watching. Stay with us. Sunday Agenda with Lydia Serrano starts.